Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks, and in this video, I'm gonna show you around Nexus 3. So over the weekend, ReFX dropped Nexus 3, and it is a huge departure, huge update from Nexus 2. As you can see, it looks completely different. There's a lot of new features going on in the background as well. And in this video, I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion about Nexus and Nexus 3, so maybe you guys have better information about whether you should upgrade or not. So let's just dive right into it. All right, first things first, you no longer need the e-licensor or the dongle. This is gonna feel so good. <laughs> Having been a long time Nexus user, the dongle's always kind of bugged me because it eats up a very valuable USB port on my computer. And with a laptop and a mobile rig, I'd never really brought Nexus with me because I needed a controller or maybe a drum pad, right, or something other than Nexus. So now that we don't have that, we're not limited to you know only using Nexus on one computer at a time, we can actually install up to two computers at a time, right? So that's really nice, and that's all done in the new cloud app, which we can see here. And the, the, the ReFX cloud app is a great, great efficient way to manage downloading, installing, and upgrading you know, the actual plugin. So speaking to that, there's another added benefit to not having the dongle, and some of you guys may not know about this, but speaking from exp experience, if you lost your e-licensor dongle back in the day, ReFX would bend you over backwards and they would say, take it, because you'd have to get a new instance, a new a whole new license of Nexus. Even if you had your DVD installer, they'd still be like, nope, you gotta get a new one, you lost your e-licensor. So that shouldn't be a problem moving forward. So everything everything appears to be just way better in terms of not having the e-licensor and the dongle and having access to the cloud app. So now moving into the plugin, there's a lot of differences, obviously, you can see here. We have a split screen from version two to version three. And we're gonna dive into Logic right now and we're actually gonna take a look at everything that's going on, both with the GUI and with things going on under the hood that make Nexus 3 a much more user-friendly plugin. All right, so we've already touched on the fact that it looks completely different, right? It's flat. It's just a whole different aesthetic, but let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the actual things that improve the usability. So first and foremost, we have the ability to resize Nexus 3 to make it as small or as large as we like. Now you'll notice that this front, pa this front page is called the librarian page now, and this has our preset browser on it, and it is front and center. It's massive. Now, if this were any other synth, I would think this would be kind of overkill for a preset browser. But given the fact that it's Nexus, and I would say that most users 80% of the time in Nexus our preset serving. This makes perfect sense. So now we have three different rows here instead of two, and it just makes searching a lot easier. We can see everything a lot more clearly, and we can narrow down our search a lot faster. We now have a search feature front and center. So let's say I want to find a flute. I can select flute, make sure I'm on all, and now it's searching through all my expansions and all the different categories, right? And here are all the flutes I have, 25 of them. Let's say I wanted to narrow down my search and I want more of a pad flute now, if we go and select pad, here are all the pads that sound flute-like. So let's load up Magic Flute. There it is. So let's say I really like that preset. I can go over to the right of it, click the heart, and now that preset will be in my favorites folder or the hearted folder. So over to the right of the heart, we actually have some different um, kind of emotions or vibes or characteristics we can search for. So instead of just searching for the category of sound, like a bass, a lead, a pad, and what bank it's in, we can choose dark, we can choose you know any category that makes sense with how the sound actually sounds. So let's say we want to go find dark, there's all of the dark sounds, right? So that's a really cool feature. Now, you can actually change the font size as well. So if you hold down control and swipe up or down on your mouse or trackpad, it will make it smaller or larger, which is really cool. All right, so those, those are most of the changes I, I feel like it's worth noting in terms of the GUI and the front-facing panel. Let's jump into some of the new features now on the Librarian tab. So we have down here macros, which is new, and those will probably be made, made uh, you know active with every ongoing expansion in the future, and you can obviously set those up on presets yourself. If we go over to the reverb, we actually have some new reverb types, the root of verb. So typically, uh, previously Nexus had the arts acoustic reverb. Now we have these other different reverbs and let's go. So let's actually take a quick listen to some of these uh, different reverbs here. So let's turn off the delay. Let's turn on our reverb. Let's go to the root of verb and let's go to nuclear. Here 
Here's solo. Nova. That one's really cool. It's got kind of a combed filter sound. And here's space. Now, I'm showing you with the mix all the way up just so you can hear the different tonal characteristics of the reverbs, but we do have those new reverbs on the librarian page. All right, so let's load up a arpeggiator. All right, let's turn down the reverb, turn the volume down. All right, that works. So let's check out the new features in the ARP. So the ARP has always been really powerful inside of Nexus. We now have presets right front and center with the ARP, which is really cool. Um, you can easily change the velocity, the grid length, all that sort of stuff. It's Everything's just clear with this, right? So if I play this. Right, it's really easy to change ARP, ARPs inside of Nexus. It's always been really easy. We have similar controls here. And of course, you can turn it off. All right, so I've loaded up a sequence. So I'm just holding down one note, right? Those, those have always been popular patches or presets for Nexus. Now, if I go to the ARP here, we now have access to each individual layer making up that sequence. We used to never have access to these things. And it's always been uh, something that I feel like Nexus users have really wanted. So for instance, I can go and turn these different these different ARPs off, right? And I would choose one that has 15 layers. It's pretty crazy that that chord progression was made up of 18 or 15 layers, but I'm just gonna keep rambling as I go through and talk about this. I hope you guys are having a really good day. Mine's going pretty well. All right, we're almost done. <sighs> All right. All right, so this is basically the bass. So if I turn off the ARP, now I should be able to just play this chromatically. All right, so that's cool because a lot of the sequence presets, in my opinion, were unusable. And there's still, some of them still sound, or a good amount of them, in my, again, my opinion, they sound cheap, they sound outdated, but at least being able to peel back the layers and use those layers chromatically gives you more access to more usable content when you do drop a kidney to spend $64 on a expansion. So there's another cool feature in the arpeggiator basically kind of like a Cthulhu or a scalar. It's called the sequence mode. So I'm gonna load up a, let's throw up this, we'll load up this Rhodes piano. Let's go to the ARP, go to the main, turn it on and select the sequence mode. So now we can right click to create chords. Now I'm assuming ReFX is going to leverage the heck out of this moving forward. Right, and I'm just holding down one note now. Of course, you can change the length and the speed, just like you would with the other ARP modes. We now have more modulation access inside of Nexus 3 as well. You can define a lot of modulation slots. So you can, I believe it's up to 20. I, I believe that's what I read. I'm not gonna count all these slots on camera, but that's a lot. And that gives you more, you know, typical conventional synthesis style control over Nexus and helps it make it feel less like a romper, which is quite cool. So moving over to the effects tab now. Now this is much you know bigger, easier to read. Of course, you have all your EQs, your insert effects, just like you did inside of Nexus 2. But the great thing is, is that you get visual feedback with these now. And they are real time. Um, this is actually your feedback of what's going on essentially with the computer code. So for instance, if we go to turn everything off except the reverb. If I turn my mix up, right, the color gets you know, a little bit more intense. If we turn the decay up, we're going to see this. All right, same with limiter and every other effect. So that's really cool to get that visual feedback. It, it feels very un-Nexus, but in a great way. All right, so that's not the coolest sequence. It's pretty cheap and outdated. But if we go back to the Features tab, we can now control these different layers. So previously 
in Nexus, we could just kind of turn them off, right? Well, now we can turn off the ARP for certain ones, which is really nice. We have more control over the signal flow and where everything's going. So I've loaded up a pad that should be fairly layered. We'll go back to features and you can see here layer one, oscillator one, two, three, and four. So we can now turn off certain elements, right? Right, we could do this before, but we just have more control, more visual feedback, and again, the interface is bigger. All right, so the update notes do say that there are 350 new factory uh, presets. It would be nice to be able to know which ones were new and which ones weren't, right? And because I can't find them in isolation, I can't play them for you. That was my plan. I was going to play the, some of the new factory presets, but they're not there. All right, and because I can't access those... I can't really find them. I can't play any of the sounds for you. I was planning on playing some of the new factory presets, but again, can't find them. And I don't want to play, obviously, the expansion sounds because a lot of you guys won't have those or just random factory presets because I won't know what's new and what's old. So it's going to sum up this first look at Nexus 3. I'm going to leave you with my final thoughts on whether or not you should get Nexus 3 or upgrade. If you're a Nexus 2 user, and you use Nexus 2 fairly regularly, I think the upgrade is worth it for you. Now, if you're not using Nexus 2 and you kind of dwindled and your use over the years have basically, you know, it's one of those plugins that you pull up like, oh yeah, I have Nexus. I don't know if it's worth it for you. I think there are better options out there at this point in time. Now, if you're not a Nexus user and think about getting into the Nexus world, I would consider this. It is expensive. It is expensive to get the plugin. You know, it's close to $300. And with that, you're going to get the factory presets. A lot of the factory presets are old. They were made three to five years ago. I know Nexus will tell you that you can still make modern music with them, and you could. But it's not like you're going to get access to the most trendy, you know, hip current sounds in all 700 of those presets. Like, you're not going to get a lot of tech house basses or, you know, a lot of the new hip hop sounds. You're just not. Now... On the flip side of that is if you want kind of a one-stop shop and you see yourself investing in their expansions, then I think it might be a good play. But if you're looking for an alternative to Nexus and you're looking for something that allows you to tweak the presets, allows you to have more of a synth-oriented user experience, check out Avenger by Vengeance Sound. They're actually this logo right here. Uh, the, one of the main guys involved in ReFX made, or in part made, Avenger, or as he says it, Avenger. Um, shout out to uh, to Manuel. He's, he's an incredible sound designer. I mean, he, I have the utmost respect for him. But I would go for Avenger in 2019, 2020 over Nexus just because, A, it's made by some of the same guys. They have EDM-leaning expansions. They do the whole expansion thing. But the great thing is when you get one of their expansions, you can edit and tweak that sound just like you could a normal synth, right? So definitely something to consider for you guys. All right, guys, that's going to sum up this video. If you have any questions or comments, post those, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you're not subscribed to the Echo Soundworks YouTube channel, please consider doing that. The support does mean a lot. We're really close to 20K. I'd love to get to 20K by the end of the year. So if you guys do subscribe, smash the notification bell so you get an update when we release new content. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.